Hey guys, welcome back to the Jones Zone. Today I want to get into a few scriptures of the Old Testament that depicts Christ. The Word appearing to Abraham in person. Because there are many doubters, you know, unbelievers out there that are saying that uh, Jesus doesn't appear in the Old Testament. And that is true. Uh, the Old Testament doesn't use the early name uh, Yeshua or, or Jesus, but... Jesus appears as the Lord. Now, he couldn't appear as Jesus because, as you know, Mary didn't exist yet. Now, remember, Jesus said before Abraham, I am. So before he was Jesus in the flesh, he is I am. He is the word. He is the Lord. I know this can be very confusing, but I totally get it. Now, I can make it a bit clear for you. Uh, let's get into Genesis. The original verses in the Old Testament. Okay, so let's open to Genesis chapter 18, verse 1 through 33. I'm going to just read the whole thing out to you. Not only does this chapter reveal Jesus, Christ, the Word, and the Son of Man, but it also reveals the Trinity. Notice how there are three visitors. And it doesn't matter which version you're reading. There's three visitors. But why three? It's because when Yahweh, Jehovah, the all-powerful creator of the universe comes, he is expressing himself in all his glory as three representatives. Guys, this is very, a very powerful revelation right here. Now, you can say what you want about the Catholics, the pagans, and all that. But they got the Trinity part right, despite all that idolatry they got going on. And so, yeah, that means they're all of them are deed in violation of his commandments. And it says this in Matthew chapter 5, verse 19, they shall be called the least in heaven for doing so. But anyways, let's get on with the scripture. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. Yeah, he bowed low. You do not bow before angels. So these representatives must actually be aspects of Yahweh the Almighty himself. And he said, My lords, S, plural, they're all lords. If I have found... Favor in your eyes, my lord. Do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat, so you can be refreshed and then go on your way, now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered. Do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three seahs of the finest flour and knead it and make some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice, tender calf, and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where's your wife, Sarah? They asked him. Look, it says they asked him, meaning it's done in unison. They're all doing it, which means all of them are God, y'all. He's referring to all of them as Lord. There in the tent, Abraham said. Then one of them said, it says one of them, meaning they don't distinguish which did it this time. I will surely return to you about this time next year and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself and she thought, after I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child now that I'm old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and she said she and laughed and she's like, I did not laugh. But he said, Yes, you did laugh. 
when the men got up to leave, they looked down towards Sodom, and Abraham walked along with them to see them on their way. Then the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right, just, so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Okay, so right here we see that the Lord is referring to himself as the Lord. You know, he's not speaking to the third person, he's talking to the other Lord, who is another member of the Trinity. The Father and the Son are both the Lord. Now, the Father is wiser than the Son, so it would make sense for the Son to ask that to the Father. And then the Father answers him with, in verse 20, Then the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great, and their sin so grievous, that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. The men turned away and went toward Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are fifty righteous people in the city? Will you sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the fifty righteous people in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will not the judge of all the earth do right? Then the Lord said, If I find fifty righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Then Abraham spoke up again. Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes, what if the number of the righteous is five less than fifty? Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five people? If I find forty-five there, he said, the Lord, I will not destroy it. Once again, Abram spoke to him, What if only forty are found there? Then the Lord said, For the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then Abram said, May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak. Uh, what if only thirty can be found there? And he, capital he, the Lord, answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. Then Abraham said, now, what if I had been so bold as to speak to the Lord? Uh, what if only 20 can be found there? Then the Lord said, For the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then Abram said, May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak just once more. What if only 10 can be found there? And he, the Lord, answered, For the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. And when the Lord had finished speaking with Abram, he left and Abraham returned home. This is huge, guys. This is a huge revelation of God's character. What does this mean? Okay, Abram is questioning God, perhaps even testing his patience right here. And each time God responds, he doesn't shut Abraham down. He doesn't get angry with him or anything like that. This shows that God is not quick to bring judgment on things that involve his children. He will delay judgment and narrow it down to one person, if he must, just to save those who are righteous. Now, it says ten there, but I, I think the uh, the Lord would have brought it down to ten, uh, one. He would have brought it down to one person, if he had to, because that's the righteous thing to do. Okay, now, there are some people who think that only Jesus was present and that the other two men were angels. Yeah, I don't think that's the case at all, because... Angels are clearly distinguished from God as hosts. And another name for God, Yahweh, is the Lord of hosts. There are some people who think that God is the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, referring to him as like a pre-incarnate Jesus Christ, which is clearly a misconception. Remember, in the beginning, there was the Word, and the Word was with God. This means that God and Jesus, the Word, were there in the beginning. And then the angels and everything else was made by them. So with that being said, we should never equate or confuse God with angels. Never.
Now, why would you ask this? It's because God is not that which he has made. Now, what we have to understand is that angels are messengers. So when they're saying something, you have to remind yourselves that they are carrying the word of God. That does not make them God, but a messenger delivering the decree or orders of the Lord. Now, as we see in this story, Abraham bows to the Lord, who did not commune with him through an angel. But no one bows to the angel of the Lord. It's because you never bow to anyone but God. So when the angel of the Lord enters the scene, pay attention to not only what the angel is saying, but how the other characters are addressing him. I might have to do a video on this because it doesn't please God that Christians are thinking it's okay to worship angels. That is not okay, people. Angels are angels and God is God. All right, so with that being said, uh, I think that about covers everything that I want to cover here. And uh, you guys have a good one. And I'm out.